Israel hits Iran. 20 Iranian missile and drone installations were targeted by 100 Israeli fighter jets in three waves. The inner operations of Operation Days of Repentance. Israel conducted precise strikes on military targets in Iran using its best fighter jets and missiles, the most recent assault in the rival's growing war. Three waves of airstrikes followed days after Iran fired nearly 200 ballistic missiles at Israel in revenge for the deaths of the leaders of its proxies Hamas and Hezbollah. Israel used its F-15 IRAM, F-16 ISUFA, and fifth-generation F-35 Adir stealth jets to carry out the strikes, which span about 2,000 kilometers. The ROC's next-generation extended standoff air-to-surface missile and the Rampage Long Range supersonic missile were the preferred armaments. To avoid escalating the conflict further, the Israeli army avoided attacking nuclear and oil facilities and instead concentrated only on military targets. Three waves of attacks on 20 Iranian missile and drone installations were executed by 100 fighter jets. The initial assaults targeted Iran's air defense and radar systems or suppression of enemy air defense or SCAD to blind Iran paving the way for subsequent operations against military installations. The second and third waves targeted Iran's drone and missile installations. The strikes were executed by the fighter jets in groups of 25 to 30. Ten jets carried out the coordinated missile strikes, with the remaining jets serving as cover and distraction. Israeli and American air defenses were on full alert to deal with retaliation missile strikes during the strikes. The Middle East has been on edge waiting for Israel to strike back for Iran's October 1st ballistic missile assault. The weather forced Israel to delay its reprisal strikes. Israel was awaiting clear weather to execute the operation, since its missiles use camera seekers to strike the targets. Iran's air defense system, however, claimed to have successfully repelled Israeli attacks in the provinces of Tehran, Kazestan, and Ilam, with limited damage to a few areas. Following the strikes, Iran and Iraq, its neighbor, closed their respective airspace. Israel attacked Iran from a distance of 2,000 kilometers, or around 1,240 miles, using more than 100 aircraft. Israel launched a powerful three-wave attack on Iran, eliminating more than 20 missile and drone facilities in the days of repentance operation, although this has not been confirmed. Also damaged was the IRGC headquarters. It appears that Israeli planes crossed Jordanian airspace to get to Iran. Israel's aircraft just flew over Iran, including the capital Tehran, as if they controlled the skies, and all of them made it back home without difficulty. Although the strike was expected and Iran prepared for it, it was powerless to stop it. Iran has a variety of air defense systems, including both imported and locally manufactured. It recently unveiled Kordad 15 an indigenous version that is regarded as being significantly more sophisticated than Kordad-3. In addition to these, Iran possesses a number of S-300 batteries manufactured in Russia. Radars that are said to be able to identify even stealthy aircraft can be stalled on S-300s. It's unclear whether Russia has given Iran such radars, or if they truly function as promised. Iran is believed to have four S-300P, and S-300 PMU-2 batteries each. Additionally, it features a number of S-200 batteries, some of which have been indigenously upgraded. According to sources, Russia has supplied Iran with a small number of S-400 batteries. In actuality, an S-330 was the target of the strike and sustained serious damage. In general, the air defense system lacks sophistication and density, and vulnerability can be taken advantage of by the Israel Air Force to enter and exit safely. The Iranian military is shown firing anti-aircraft guns at random with no visible hits in social media footage. Iran's ballistic missile attack demonstrated that it is a rather powerful offensive force, but defensively, it appeared, to put it mildly, weak. Although the Iranian Air Force is said to have around 300 combat-capable aircraft, all of them are third- or fourth-generation models. There are over 190 fighter aircraft, including the F-4 Phantom II, Northrop F-5s, and of course the legendary F-14 Tomcat, Russian-made Sukhoi Su-22 and Sukhoi Su-24. The MiG-29 is the most modern fighter, and Iran operates approximately only 25 of these. 
The fighters' air-to-air -air missiles are much less advanced in technology than Israel's. Given the Israeli Air Force's technological superiority and possession of fifth-generation fighter jets like the F-35, the non-stealthy jets will be easily identified, and the most likely result will be the shooting down of Iranian jets. In other words, Israel jets flew into Iran's airspace in and out uncontested. Israel's targeted strikes on Iran's radar systems, air defense missiles, missile production facilities, and drone manufacturing plants have sent Iran into a state of shock and limited its military response capabilities. By dismantling key components of Iran's defense and offensive infrastructure, Israel has left Iran with significant gaps in both its domestic security and regional power projection. Without these critical assets, Iran faces substantial challenges in re-establishing its defensive posture and resuming the development of strategic military technologies. This sudden and severe loss not only affects Iran's military readiness, but also creates new vulnerabilities in its national security strategy, marking a critical setback for its military ambitions. Will Iran retaliate against Israel? Do you think Iran has enough military power to surprise Israel? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you learned and enjoyed our video. If you want to watch a video informative like this, click any of the two videos that will appear before this video ends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like our video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.